Hey everybody, Jordan with the Young Turks and TYT Politics. Hope everybody is well on Monday. There was also the story of her on Friday behind closed doors at a fundraiser with, you know, a bunch of high dollar donors basically said, you know, half of Trump, half of Trump's uh, f- supporters, uh, they fit into a quote basket of deplorables. Be grossly generalistic. You can put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> right? The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. But that other basket of people are people who feel the government has let them down, the economy has let them down, nobody cares about them. Not, not a smart thing to say. I think that uh, really what Hillary Clinton is doing there, I, I wouldn't say it's quite to the level of super predators, but really what that shows is Hillary Clinton's a lot more comfortable talking behind closed doors to her donors. And that's when you get kind of the, the, the pure Hillary Clinton without the phony, you know, I'm going to raise wages and out for the middle class and we're stronger together. And you just get the straight um, demeaning talk. I don't, I don't, I've been around the country. You know, it's, it's a generalization to call half of Trump supporters racist, misogynist, xenophobic. I think a lot of them are. A lot of the people I've interviewed are. And you could, you know, we have a whole playlist of Donald Trump on TYT politics. So uh, it's not that there aren't elements in Trump's uh, support base that are racist, misogynist, and xenophobic. But if you, as a candidate, are trying to reach independence, if you're trying to say we're stronger together and we're united, and then it's shown that behind closed doors, you're basically, you know, knocking a, a huge portion of your opponent's support base. I mean, it's not quite Mitt Romney 47%, but it has the optics of it because it's behind closed doors. You're saying it in front of the big dollar donors. So I think Hillary Clinton on that, you know, she came out with a mea culpa and apologized the next day. But I think, you know, the bottom line is Hillary Clinton's trust numbers are not going to turn around. Uh, It's too late for that. And there's going to be ads, not just about her collapsing, but there's going to be ads about, um, you know, her calling a good portion of Trump's support base, basically racist and xenophobic. And I don't even think, yes, her most ardent supporters, uh, her most ardent supporters don't have a problem with it and would agree with it. But independent voters, people who just vote based on the person and, you know, whether they think they have good values and their values match with them, aren't going to like that kind of talk. And we should also say, by the way, there's plenty of racist and misogynists in the Democratic Party, too. They're just not as open verbally about it. Oh, you know, Ron already mentioned there's already an ad about it. I should have said that. I mean, these things happen quick. There's already ads in the swing states with Hillary Clinton, you know, saying this stuff. So at the end of the day, you know, number one, you should always know there's going to be video on you, even when you think you're talking in private. But number two, uh, you don't talk that way, you know, about as a candidate. And you shouldn't talk that way as president about, uh, you know, millions of people. I mean, Trump, whether you like him or not, got uh, I think he got 13 million votes. So. When you, when you generalize them that half of them are just a bunch of racists, it's not endearing to the independents, and it's not, frankly, it's not progressive. I think Bernie Sanders was more diplomatic about it when he said Trump is praying to the worst instincts of people. And he looped it into people, a lot of Trump supporters are uh, frustrated economically. Uh, you know, they've been left behind, and that's why they might be gravitating to him which is true. It's not said in a derogatory way. And Bernie Sanders wasn't, certainly wasn't going, you know, the same night to go hang out with his, you know, big dollar donors and, you know, call Trump supporters or Hillary Clinton supporters racist. So this is really about you, you know, who are you behind closed doors versus in public? And I think we've established over and over again, Hillary Clinton is, it's pretty much, you know, extreme makeover any given, any given city, you know, as the winds go, as the polls go, she'll say whatever she needs to say. But she also, if you watch the video of her calling, you know, the baskets of deplorable, calling them, you know, a basket of the deplorables, she looked very comfortable. And I think when you contrast how she looked talking to donors versus how she looked um, just, on, you know, on a debate stage or at a speech, she looks like she's in her element with with wealthier donors. And she got great laughs when she said, you know, half of them are racist and this and that. 
So I think uh, at the end of the day, she's got she's got problems. Um, you know, again, I, I've seen negative comments coming my way that I that I haven't gone further on the health. You know, I'm not here to give you what you want to hear. If you want to hear conspiracy theories about her health, you know, there's plenty of other people on YouTube that will do that. I don't know if there's anything further wrong with her, so I'm not going to get into that. But I am here to tell you, as a political matter, I, I think at this point, if the election was held today, she would win. But I also think uh, there's a lot of real wild cards to debate, which I think Trump could surprise a lot of people. Trump's a master at making his lack of knowledge and lack of policy awareness and lack of a real plan actually be a benefit to him. You know, no other presidential candidate, if they were asked, what's your foreign policy? If they said, I'm not going to tell you, I want to be unpredictable. I mean, they would they would have been out of the race already. But Trump uses it almost as a, oh, he's wise. You know, we don't want to give the enemy, you know, advance notice what we're doing. I think uh, he could really surprise people because Hillary Clinton might uh, make the mistake of being too prepared and too scripted on the, in this debate. Also, assuming that the antibiotics work, this and that. Hopefully, you know, I don't wish her anything poorly as a person. She she might not be her best. I mean, it's uh, what's today? The f- this today is the twelfth. So you know, yeah, she has like a week and a half till the debate. She should be better by then. But at the end of the day, uh, Trump is Trump has nothing to lose. I mean, Trump at this point is is a long shot. So he has nothing to lose. She has everything to lose. And let's not forget, um, Mitt Romney crushed President Obama in the first debate in twenty twelve. Mitt Romney, you know, talk about an etch-a-sketch. He came off like he was a Democrat, uh, and Obama looked lost. A lot of times, the, the challenger or, some, or the underdog co- win, uh, wins the first debate. You have that coupled with her health problems, coupled with her calling half of Trump's uh, support base racist and misogynist. Uh, you know, it is not it is not a good morning for Hillary Clinton. Uh, I wish her well. You might not like that because a lot of you hate her. Um, I could separate my my real dis, distrust and dislike for her uh, policy wise from uh, a person. Very few people I wish you know real, real damage to. Uh, Dick Cheney is one of them. That's that's for another time. Um, but I think at the end of the day, um, what we're going to see now, it's a matter of what is Trump. Trump is going to pounce on this basket of the deplorables. I think he's also uh, going to kind of let the super PACs and some of the Republican operatives attack her on the collapsing. So he has no fingerprints on it. You'll see super PAC ads with her collapsing, all that. Um, There were reports that the DNC was having a private meeting uh, about Hillary Clinton. I haven't confirmed that. Uh, I would find that hard to believe. A lot of people are asking, uh, you know, if if things really went to hell and Hillary could not continue, uh, would it be Tim Kaine or Bernie Sanders? My understanding is Bernie Sanders uh, having the most delegates uh, since that was that was that was voted on, whereas Tim Kaine wasn't voted on. He was chosen by Hillary Clinton. Uh, Bernie Sanders would step into that role. Now, we know that there's a lot of uh, rewriting of the rules last minute to fit, you know, the establishment's wants. So if it got to that, it's not a certainty that, that Bernie Sanders would step in. But to my knowledge and people I've spoken with, uh, having the most delegates, uh, he would he would come in as the nominee. So we shall see. Uh, There's a lot of balls in the air. And I think um, overall, I think if anybody, you know, all the pundits who are saying don't look at the polls, it's going to be a landslide. I don't I don't believe that. And I think Hillary Clinton, again, with the privacy and the secrecy between the, uh, you know, not telling everybody about the pneumonia mixed with um, then behind closed doors to her fat cat donors, basically calling millions of people racist. Not a good look. So that's my take. Uh, Again, uh, I'll be in New York uh, this week, going to D.C. on Wednesday to do do some interviews uh, on on the Georgetown campus uh, for the Young Turks. It's going to be used in their new show with Fusion, which starts today, I believe, uh, is their first one. Uh, for those of you that ask, Fusion has no ownership stake in the Young Turks. This isn't like, a, you know, the Young Turks is now owned by Fusion. It's simply a partnership. It's a 12-week show that the Young Turks is going to be doing on Fusion. They're going to be going to college campuses all over the country. Uh, I'll be doing some interviews on the campuses, interviewing students for some of them. So that's what I'll be doing uh, on Wednesday. And then I'll be celebrating my uh, 30th birthday uh, later in the week. So uh, I thank you guys for watching. 
And uh, stay tuned to youtube.com slash TYTPolitics. We have some more videos going up from my reporting in Flint, Michigan, um, as well as my reporting uh, following Jill Stein uh, last week. Thanks, guys.